Versus right. Everybody's favorite hour of the week when Perry does a visual novel on stream or something like that. I don't fucking know. We're back. I know it's been a couple weeks. I promise I'm not trying to do every other week. I want to do it weekly. It's just things happen to come up every other week. <clears throat> but we are here. We are back with uh, some lane versus right. So how about we? Almost break the game and get back into it. <clears throat> oh god, I, I kind of have like a thing. <clears throat> I may need to clear my throat. I do these like voice acting warm ups and I kind of almost choked a little. I may need to clear that out. Hold on, give me a sec. Okay, I think I got it. All right. Anyway, where were we? It's been a few days. And by a few days, I mean two weeks. And so, Miss Cantabella stood in court under suspicion of being a witch. Thankfully, a young baker, or should I say, a young defense attorney, named Mr. Wright, was able to prove their innocence. 
However, she soon found herself under yet another accusation. Miss Cantabella was believed to be the great witch Bazella. It's imperative we pull our efforts together and assist her in any way possible. I know it sounded a lot more like Leighton uh, dialogue-wise, but I've done the BRB as Luke like every time, so honestly, I've kind of voice acted myself into a corner, to be honest. Chapter 3, The Great Witch. <clears throat> the Great Witch, Bezella. The legendary witch from ancient times. She is the source of all evil, and the one who rose, to, who one who gives rise to all other witches. As long as the great witch Bezella is alive, there will always be witches in Labyrinthia. Apparently, that is the commonly held belief. Therefore, if Bezella were to be put to the fire, there would be no further need for these trials. How's the audio, by the way? It's been a while since we did, uh, Leighton vs. Right, so I want to make sure it's balanced alright. Am I too loud? Is the game too soft? Other way around? Just wanted to check. In other words, no Bezella, no witches, right? But... How does all that implicate a spella? Fuck if I do. Uh, by the way, Professor, you seem to know a lot about all this. The Professor and I discovered a mural of the Great Witch Bazella in a room below the library. And it looked like it was painted a long time ago, that's for sure. Hmm, you mean like a wall painting? Bazella? Indeed, there were some historical remains in beneath the library. We found it there. At any rate, I'd very much like to investigate Bezella in greater detail. I'm afraid my knowledge extends no further than the legend known to the townspeople. In that case, I guess we have no choice but to ask Espella. Maybe she could tell us why she's accused of being Bezella. Well, yeah, but didn't they tell us we can't see her for a while? <laughs> Come on, we never let that stop us before! Fuck the cops! Uh, in that mind, it's how we always end up in all sorts of trouble. You're right, though. Fuck the cops. Well, fine. Just leave it to me. It's something that a little sweet-talking can't fix. Maya, uh, I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Hey! Look, pal. We need to see Espella. It's a matter of life and death. I'm not sure I would qualify that as sweet talk, but <laughs> rather more of a full-on assault. Did you not hear what Inquisitor Barnum said? Espella Catapella is currently undergoing questioning. And while that's taking place, no one is permitted entry. Uh, can't you do something? <laughs> hey, keep it down, will ya? Orders are orders. No matter how many times you ask, the answer will be no. Now be on your way, will ya? Go on, go! Okay, I saw the mic peak a little there. I may need to adjust the volume a little bit. <laughs> Access denied. That much is obvious, Maya. I can't believe Mr. Barnum took a spell into custody just because of that outburst. That reminds me, something Inquisitor Barnum said has been bothering me. It was not I who made the decision. I believe that's how he put it. Ah, yeah, that's right. So, in other words, there's someone of higher authority than Inquisitor Barnum, huh? That's it! We'll just go and ask that person instead! But who in Labyrinthia could have more authority than Inquisitor Barnum? Hmm, well, I know how to find out. Let's ask around, Luke. Oh, not you again. You don't give up, do you? Like I said before, you cannot see- uh, It's not a speller. There's someone else we'd like to see. That's right! Lucky it takes to see that person ranked above Inquisitor Barnum. Above Inquisitor Barnum? You, you, you're not telling me you want to see the High Inquisitor. So they're called the High Inquisitor then? Who do they take up there? Luke! What's this? Are you seriously suggesting you don't even know of High Inquisitor Darklaw? High Inquisitor Darklaw? That's weird, I can't help but feel I've heard that name somewhere before. 
I'm sorry, but could you tell us where we can find that person? Uh, please do me a favor and don't ask. She's not the sort of person you can just drop in and see, believe me. But there's something of importance we wish to discuss with her. Oh, you people really are fearless. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. To meet High Inquisitor Darklaw, you must go to the Inquisitor's Hall. Alright. Just, uh, be careful not to upset her. We understand. We thank you for your assistance. Is the High Inquisitor really so fearsome? <laughs> of course not, not our High Inquisitor. She's wonderful, beautiful, intelligent, and just a little strict. You don't have to go uh, mention what I said about upsetting her. <laughs> Understood? Uh, don't worry, you can rely on us. High Inquisitor. That title sounds really high up in the food chain, doesn't it? Apparently, if we go to the Inquisitor's Hall, we can see her there. Well, we won't achieve anything standing here. Let's go and see her. She can gaslight, gatekeep, and girl boss. <laughs> so true. So true. Oh god, where are the controls? Here we are. Whoop. Let's go to the hall, hall, hall. Yo. There they are. Ah, I can see Inquisitor Barnum over there. Okay, which means that that woman standing next to him must be... High Inquisitor Darklaw. It looks so serious. It might be difficult to butt in. Perhaps we should wait until they finish their conversation. We are prepared for the questioning of Inspella Cantabella. She's in the Death Knell Dungeon. Would you like to see her now? Barnum, I intend to leave the questioning of the girl to you. But if she is indeed the Great Witch, shouldn't the High Inquisitor be there? It is not necessary that I be present, and I have much faith in your abilities. Understood. I will not let you down. I intend to visit the scene of the crime. You take care of things here while I'm away. The scene of the crime? Uh, you mean... That's right. It's unlikely there are any clues left, though. Anyway, the questioning is yours, Barnum. Yes, my lady. It looks like they finished talking. Um, uh, Inquisitor Barnum? <coughs> uh, you? How did you get in here? Sorry, sir. We didn't intend to eavesdrop. Also, your door is just open. Wait, is there a door? I, I actually can't tell right now. It's not in frame. Um, Inquisitor Barnum, there's something we'd like to ask you. No time right now. You'd best leave. Fuck! He's gone! Gone to question a speller? It would appear that we have to find what we need to know from the High Inquisitor. Hi, bestie. Oh damn, we actually can't see the door, so we don't actually know. Oh shit, hint coin. Make my door disappear with a mirror. Alright, uh... Damn, the, the cursor's kind of got that uh, energy today. Or did it always have that energy? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Barnum uses a dumbbell as a paperweight. I guess it makes sense when you have that many papers. It's as if Mr. Bottom wanted to say, I've got a heavy workload today. Shut up. <laughs> I can picture him slowly making his way through all this while Darklaw stares at him across the room. That's a bone. Professor, there's a bone on the carpet. A single bone meaningfully placed beside the Inquisitor's desk. That, Luke, smells like a puzzle. You're not gonna give me one? Damn, okay. I see how it is. Wait. Drawing of someone's scary face. Barnum has a gift for caricatures. That's Inquisitor Darklaw! The picture looks like it's used for dagger throwing practice. Uh, I hope Mr. Barnum and Miss Darklaw have a good work relationship. No bone puzzles. Alright. Uh, hey, bestie. You're looking very dapper today. So, you are the High Inquisitor? From the way you talk, one would think we had already met. I'm certain we have never met before, but I did have the opportunity of seeing you at the Storyteller's Parade.
Yeah, she was there. Why she got cat ears, though? That's right, Professor. During that parade, she was standing right next to the storyteller. The storyteller? Isn't he the one who... Uh... He's known as the creator in this town. So any person who gets to stand by his side has to be someone important, right? Did you all just come here to stand around speculating? If so, there's a quiet cell in the dungeon which has just become vacant. You can speculate all you want in there. Uh, just a moment, Miss Darklaw. We have come here to talk to you. Talk to me? That's right. It's about this trial. We'd like to ask you about it. Inquisitors do not make a habit of discussing the details of the trials with just anyone. Just anyone? Uh, we, or in particular, he, acted as this fellow's attorney. That is hardly just anyone. <laughs> um, uh, that's me, all right. Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. So, you're the one. The Metal Claw is really cool. I always, it's always the characters with the Metal Claws that I end up, like, wanting the drip of. Because there was Drebber in, uh... Greatest Attorney 2. I hope Ollie doesn't watch this part back and uh, get that spoiled for himself. But also, there's Dark Claw. <laughs> I received a detailed report. Yes, indeed. Most interesting. Hmm. So, what would you like to know? I should ask Dark Claw about. Uh. Spella. Spella was proven. Uh, Spella was proven innocent at the last trial. Oh god, I think I'm becoming British. Despite that, she's now been accused of being Bazella, even though there's no decisive evidence to support that claim. Uh, just a moment. Before we discuss that, there is one thing I need to make clear. While it's true that you acted as a spell as defender in the last trial, that does not necessarily mean to say you will be defending her again. What do you mean? Just because the trial is different, that doesn't change the fact that I'm her attorney. The charge against Isabella Cantabella is of the gravest nature. You mean the charge that she's the Great Witch Bazella? What makes you think the accused wants you to defend her again? Does that mean that if this fellow does, doesn't ask Nick to defend her again, then he can't request to be her defense attorney? Correct. The Great Witch Bazella is the source of all other witches. Her defender could, by their own words, place themselves in a greater danger. Knowing Espella's kind nature, I don't think she'd want to subject anyone to that risk. That's why she kept quiet earlier. However, Espella is at this very moment undergoing questioning, is she not? And there's a possibility that she may be cleared of the suspicion of being a witch. That's right. That can't possibly be evidence of Espella actually being a witch. So how could anyone prove she is? Just how well do you people really think you know Espella? Eh? On what grounds can you say that she's not a witch, that there's no evidence? I'd be glad to have you explain that to me. That's not... fair. Well, fuck. I guess we should ask about the Great Witch. We are certainly not experts when it comes to the Great Witch Bazella, so could you perhaps tell us more about this particular witch? Uh, to begin with, is the Great Witch not just a figure of legend? The Great Witch Bazella does exist. That is a fact accepted by all of the townsfolk. In the past, the Great Witch Bazella used her evil power to burn the entire town. Hmm. She burned the town. Professor, we saw that witch in the picture in the library. She was burning the town. If the Great Witch Bazella uses her powers, this town could burn again, as it did long ago. We have to capture Bazella before that can happen. But there's no way a spell would ever do something like that! <clears throat> One thing I'd really like to know is why a spell of all people is suspected of being Bazella. <clears throat> of course, there is one reason. One reason? Why is she a sus? From what you've told us so far, it seems there's something about a spell that we do not yet know. Something which makes the townsfolk, and you yourself, believe that she is the Great Witch Bazella. Could you tell us what that reason is? <clears throat> That's something you will have to investigate. 
As the High Inquisitor, do you think it would be in my best interest to provide you with that information? Oh, please! If you could just tell us a little more! Oh, wait, no, that was Luke. Oh, please! If you could tell us just a little more! I don't have to tell you anything. If you really want to know, find out for yourselves. Well, at least let us see Espella! So, Inquisitor Barnum is questioning Espella right now. Is that right? Yes, he is. So seeing her tonight would be difficult. Try coming back tomorrow. Tomorrow? All right, fine. We'll try again tomorrow. That we will! I hope you all realize how this will look to the people of this town when they see you all supporting the person suspected of being the Great Witch Bazella. When it comes to rescuing a spell, I'm not worried about what people think. And I feel the same way as Mr. Wright. <clears throat> that is what I was hoping to hear. At the very least, you should investigate. And pray I don't see disappointment in your eyes the next time we meet. Now, if you will excuse me. Sheesh! <laughs> hey, Nick. I was thinking. We've met her before, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, we have. In that trial back in England. Huh? Then who on earth is she? I'm not entirely sure, but at that time she was a teacher from a boarding school for girls. Was she indeed? It would seem Labyrinthia is packed full of puzzles. And this is one puzzle I would really like to solve. Okay then, leave it to me. I'll give it my best shot. Um, where should we begin? While I appreciate your enthusiasm, Luke, I wonder if it might be better to first return to the bakery. Miss Claire is no doubt worried about us. We should let her know the situation. Right! We need, we need to tell her about the trial. Ah, <laughs> uh, I have a feeling that's not going to go too well. I think you did very well, Mr. Wright. I'm sure she'll understand. She's like a mother to us, Bella. She must be worried sick about her. All right, everyone. Let's head back and tell her everything. How the court proceedings went and the way the townspeople reacted. Espella, it would seem you do indeed have a secret. Hmm, Leighton doing that deep thonking again. Whoop. The manner and speech of the mysterious woman accompanying Inquisitor Barnum allude to her high status. Mr. Wright and Miss Fay seem to have heard of her. Who on earth could she be? Standing alongside the storyteller during the parade indicates her high standing and the power she wields. Alright, let's go. So let's go. How do I... That's the button. I could just tap it, but also, you know, buttons. Whew! I feel like it's been a while since we've been out here in the fresh air. Indeed. Shall we head back to the bakery? Oh. Mm -hmm. Yo! Puppo! Yikes! Whoa, he's one frisky little puppy. He's a cute little guy, huh? He's begging to be petted, aren't you, boy? Good boy, good little dog. See? See? Look, Nick, he's so happy. He's showing his teeth like he's smiling. I'm not so sure dogs show their teeth when they're happy. Don't be such a spoil sport. Come on, try petting him. All right. Let me just give this a shot. Come on, here, boy. Mr. Bright, don't, don't pet him. Huh? Ah! Ah! Oh! <coughs> I guess even cute little puppies have a bite worse than their bark. Are you all right, Mr. Wright? I tried to warn you. And there he goes. What the dog? Hmm, I guess you can't always judge a dog by its looks. He may look cute, but what he was saying wasn't cute at all. What, what do you mean by what he was saying, Luke? Oh, that's right, Miss Faye. Luke can understand what animals are saying. Wow, that's amazing! It's like magic! Luke, you have magic powers just like the witches do! Um, given the current circumstances, I'm not so sure that's a good thing. Don't say that so loud. I wish I could talk to animals. I'd love to talk to a puppy, or even to a spell's cat, Eve. That puppy's way of talking reminded me a lot of Inquisitor Barnum. He said something like, I'll only say this once, Sir Blue Knight. I, Constantine, do not permit you to stroke me. 
uh, what's that effect? Hmm, so the dog's name is Constantine, huh? Hmm, perhaps that could have been Inquisitor Barnum's dog. I'm sure of it. He ran off in the direction of the Inquisitor's Hall. Maybe he's going to meet his master. That dog is just like his owner. Constant. Constantly barking, constantly biting Nick, and constantly adorable. So, Maya, you mean you really believe in my ability? Trust me, Luke, when it comes to people and their special abilities, nothing surprises me. I have a few myself, you know. Alright, then let's get back to the bakery. Come on, Nick, let's go. <sighs> Guess so. I think I've been bitten enough for one night. By dog and by his owner. Let us move. There's some coins in here. Hello. One. Two. Oi! Hmm? Did you see the leaves moving in that tree over there? Oh, yes, I did! I wonder what it could be. How's there a bird up there? It's a woman. Why'd you have floating down? <laughs> I must say, this is a surprise. I didn't expect you to drop in like that. What are you doing up there in that tree? <laughs> I can't tell you that. It's a maiden secret. Is that so? Do you want to know why? <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, I suppose I can tell you anyway. I was searching for flowers. You climbed up that tree to find flowers? You certainly are an active young lady. I thought of a good way to appeal to the man of my dreams, you see. I'm going to create a flower bouquet like the ones the fairies would make. Am I head over heels? Oh, she's unsufferable. Oh boy, what's this puzzle? Uh, pretty posy. A flower with very unique petals sits in a garden. However, it seems as if the petals are not correctly arranged. This flower pixie thinks they should be in an arranged that each petal is next to a petal of either the same color or shape. Touch a petal once to pluck it and again to place it. Move the petals so that they are in a that they are arranged per the pixie's instructions. Okay. All right. Uh. Okay. Can I read that again? A pet next to a petal of ear, the same color or shape. Okay, so that's next to a shape. Uh, let's do color. Okay, uh, blue. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh wait, shit, yeah, it's not the right color. color. Right, okay, okay, let's start from here. Okay, done, 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 done. Oh yeah, that's a non sequitur too, huh? Uh, bup, 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 bup. Okay. Wait, shit. Wait. I'm very close, I just need to, like, think on it. Okay. Uh... I'm gonna rearrange a lot of shit, hold on. Boink. Can I move the- can I move the Orpa one? Yes, I can! Okay. Uh, no, not quite. Uh... Oi! Wait, am I blind? That- yeah, that's not the same- that's not the same hue, is it? Heck. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I need a new monitor. The saturation makes that a little hard to tell. Blink. There we go. See what you think of this. 
As you'd expect from a gentleman in training. Good shit, good shit. That's a lovely arrangement of pedals. The pixie seems very pleased. <clears throat> if I give him a bouquet such as this, will he ever fall heel over heels for me? Oh, I can't wait for the day when I can meet him again. Alright, where's that last coin, though? I want that coin. You will give me that coin. Coin, coin, coin. There it is. Okay. Alright, uh... Let me make sure there aren't any hidden puzzles wafting around here. Doesn't look like it, just coins, which I can get later on. I forget where the puzzle catch-up thing is. I'm, I might need to do that off-stream at some point if we end up, uh... Actually, I forget if there even... Are there puzzle gates in this game? Fuck, I forget. It's been so long. <laughs> Phoenix, Maya, why are you back so late? Um, yeah, sorry we're so late. It's just that, uh... Well, we, uh... About a spell, uh... <laughs> what are you two looking so glum about? I was so surprised! Huh? Just how is it that you could do such a brilliant job as a defender? It was wonderful the way you proved the spell innocent. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Uh, not at all. Uh, no need to thank me. After all, uh, the spell is still... I know, Phoenix. Oh, were you watching the trial? I certainly was, Maya. There's no reason for you to look so glum. The way you stood up in the Inquisition, in all my life I've never seen anything like it. That outstretched arm, that pointing finger. It was truly a sight to behold, Phoenix. Boss, that's why I'm not at all worried. Huh? Because I believe in you, Phoenix. And I know you'll rescue Espella again. You will rescue her, won't you? I, I will. I'll be there for her no matter what. Right to the very end. <laughs> that's a promise now, you hear? Now then, you must both be tired after all you've been through. You, mu you must have a good rest. That means you two gentlemen as well. What? <laughs> Do you mean us? Of course. Well, if it hadn't been for you two, Fiend couldn't have done what he did. Thank you, madam. I have to bring out another extra large loaf for our young apprentice here. I, no, I mean, I'm, I'm fine, really, but thank you for the offer. Nick, we have to give it all we've got for the boss's sake. You got that right. It might be difficult to rest right after a trial like that. But tonight, perhaps, we should all try to get a good rest, as Mrs. Eclair suggests. I agree, Professor. Tomorrow's a new day, after all. Let's go inside, then. If we don't take that rest, we won't be able to do our best tomorrow. I hope Spell is able to rest for tonight as well. Why'd she stand in there? Let's go inside. Wait, there was somebody outside. Fuck, that might have been a bonus puzzle. <gasps> Well then, let's all turn in for the night. We're missing like a RPG like sleep jingle transition between scenes there. <laughs> oh, is that you, Maya? I could hardly tell the room was so well lit. <laughs> oh shit! Hey Ollie. Welcome to the stream. The creme de la stream. Hope you had a good one. Hey Luke, what's the matter? Can't sleep? I kind of woke up, uh, but then I guess you did too, right? You're worried about Espella, aren't you? Yeah. After all, you were living here together. She must be like a member of the family. But you and Mr. Wright found yourselves here in Labyrinthia, just like me and the Professor, didn't you? Seems that way, even though we've supposedly been living here for five years now. But those memories didn't exactly turn out to be real. I've got no idea how I even had that kind of memory in the first place. On top of that, even the boss seemed to have the exact same memory of us. She's done so much to take care of us. When I think about it, I can't help but feel like we were deceiving her, you know? I don't think you have any reason to feel that way, Maya. 
It's not your fault that your memories have changed. Even if the memories are different, I'm sure your feelings for Mr. Claire and Isabella are real. You're so right, Luke. So true, bestie. I feel way better now. Thank you. <laughs> not at all. It's nothing. All right. I'm going to try real hard to get my beauty sleep. I'll be out faster and you can say goodnight. I'm not so sure beauty is achieved by sleeping or that sleep is something you can try hard at, but I'm definitely ready to sleep. Um, Maya, did you just say something? Me? I didn't say anything. I'm sure I heard something. Maybe it was from outside. I wonder what it was. Let's go have a look, Luke. Hey, isn't that Patty over there? It looks like she's searching for something. Eve. Oh, Eve. Goodness me, where could that cat have gone? She doesn't normally go wandering off this time of night. I suppose you're worried about Spella too, aren't you? Oh, Spella. I wonder what she's doing right now. Is she crying herself to sleep? Don't worry, Spella. We've got friends here, and we're gonna make sure you come home to us safely. That's why I put this bread in one of my pockets. It's, it's very deep. And when you do, we'll all sit down and have a nice dinner together. She's worrying so much about Espella. She looks so sad. She really does. This must be so hard for her. <gasps> Maya! I've got a great idea! Let's go and find Eve for her. If Eve still isn't back by the time Espella comes home, she'd miss her for sure. And Mrs. Eclair could relax a little too. Luke, you're a little genius! Let's go and find Eve for Espella and Patty. But... I wonder where she could have gone. <laughs> she could. Jeez. <laughs> we'll probably find her quicker if we ask around a bit. Eve is easy to recognize. She looks quite distinctive and has that scarf around her neck. Now, was it a red scarf or was it like a... I don't know. I'm sure someone must have seen her. Correction, you're not just a little genius. You're a super mega huge genius. <laughs> it's nothing. I mean, I, I'm the professor's apprentice. Let's get this show on the road. How about we start by looking around the town center? Right you are, Maya, but we better take care since we'll be in the streets at night. Don't worry, though. If anything happens, you can rely on me. It's a job of every gentleman to protect a lady. Let's go, Maya. As a grown-up here, I can't help but feel it should be me who's doing the protecting. Let's go hunt for a fucking cat. Okay, that's just an NPC. That was not actually a puzzle peep. Okay. Where should we ask first? Hey! Make way, make way! Lair's to be delivered! Ah, uh, uh, sorry! <sighs> okay, everything seems to be okay. Hmm? What is it? Um, it's a little late in the evening to be delivering letters, isn't it? Yes, yes it is! But I'm the only courier in this town, which means I'm always busy, even at this time of day. What, you're the only one? That must be tough. So, uh, what is it then? What can I do for you? Oh, right. Um, I haven't seen a black cat anywhere around here by any chance. Black cat. Hmm. <gasps> I do believe I did! I saw it! The cat, I mean. Wait, really? That's great. Could you tell us about it? Well, I could, but I'm wondering. Should I tell you for free? Oh, um... We don't have any money on us, uh, if that's what you mean. No, no, not money. It's just, I'm kind of in a bind. I'm sort of not sure about where to take this next letter, I mean. You think you could help me with it? If that's all that's troubling you, we'd be glad to help. Oh, sweet God. Red and blue letters are scattered all over town and ready to be collected. Constantine's route stipulates that he turn left or right after certain letters, but it seems he's forgotten the route. Help Constantine remember his route around town so he collects every single letter. Rearrange the order of the letters in the list to alter the route. Oi. Oh, this, uh, this is gonna be an experience. Okay, so he starts there. Okay. So you pick that one up. I assume, yeah, you would, uh... 
go right first. Uh, and then uh, maybe skip that one and go to that, yeah. And then uh, this one, you, uh, yeah, you could turn left, I guess, and then uh, left, left, and then right, maybe. Uh, bu bu boink. Uh, wait, no, that's a third left. <laughs> that's a third left. It doesn't change the directions with the thing, Perry. Okay, let's read this back. Boink. I should put a memo on screen so I can actually see what I'm doing. So y'all can see what I mean. So it goes boink, boink. 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 And then we go like this, and then maybe... No, wait, if it went right, then it would be like, uh... Wait, if it goes... Oi, oi! What was it again? Okay. Okay, okay, so it's first the blue one, then the red one. So I'll go right, then left. Left. Okay, that's three reds, and then the blue. That would be a left. Okay, actually, I might just need to fucking play it so I know how this actually goes, because I don't know if it's like once it every time he collects. Just, just I want to see. Hold on, just do it real quick. Okay, yeah. So he picks up the letters anyway. It's not skipping them. Okay. So the next time he collects one, that's when he does the thing. Okay. All right, uh, well in that case, would that be it? I was pretty close there. Bring, bring. Yeah, that's how you do it, nice. Excellent. Leave it to your friendly neighborhood spirit medium. All in a day's work nice. for Maya Fay, Ace Assistant. Wonderful! All the letters have been collected and accounted for. Constantine looks quite pleased. Hey, that's amazing! Now I know where to go! Thanks! A puzzle like that is a piece of cake! Now then, a promise is a promise. Let me tell you about that car. Although I, um, didn't actually see it. The cat, I mean. I more heard it, or rather, about it. The minstrel near the fountain was singing about a black cat. Near the fountain? <gasps> That's the town set, on it, isn't it? Right, well, time's ticking. Uh, better get going. Uh, these will live themselves, you know. Letters, I mean. Whoosh! There she goes. Wow, that's a world-class sprint. Now that's determination. Come on, Luke. Put the pedal to the metal. Hey, Maya, wait for me! Whoop. All right, uh, the center with the fountain is right here, and I already have all the coins. Oh, right, this fucker. Taking a drink in advance, just so, just so you know. <laughs> Good evening, sir. There's something we'd like to ask you. What's the matter? You're a bit quiet this evening, aren't you? I wonder what's up. A sore throat, maybe? Bardly. Say <laughs> la vie, say la vie. Uh, say la vie. I have no choice but to retire! Say la vie! Yikes! Alas, now a rival has up and appeared. So how can I sing when I'm so afeard? A simple bar just cannot compete with a rival that's strong. He cannot be beat. Please calm down. What do you mean? Hmm? <clears throat> oh, that bar with a parrot on his shoulder, wrapped in colors, he couldn't be bolder. When he sings it is with such grace, he draws the eyes of all in the place. This Bartley Bart named Bartley, no birds, it's on his shoulder. Dressed so drably, he can hardly compete with the Bard who is bolder. Huh. It seems some amazing new rival has appeared. Woe's me. 
Well, for starters, you could try perking up a little. Just don't be depressed, it's that easy. <laughs> perking up? I need some color to cheer up my day. I need some color to replace the gray. You need color? For example, bright colors such as these. Number 27. Stained glass. Have you tried making out with your rival? So true. <sighs> the stained glass window above has been painted beautifully using full bright colors. Paint a similar stained glass window so that each neighboring color is different. Think carefully of where each color should go. Alright. <clears throat> so paint it so that each one is different. Okay, I have one place to use yellow. Which means that's probably the center. That's how you think. Oh, look at her! I love Maya. <laughs> and there goes Luke, too. Woo! They cannot touch, right? Yeah. Each neighboring color is different. Okay. Alright, let's see. Like this, yeah? That's good, right? Yeah! This is my answer. Oh, let me do the next one, too. Alright, nothing like a few splashes of color to really brighten up a window. Look at this, Mr. Bartley. The colors are beautiful. Come on, cheer up. A minstrel isn't judged by appearances, he's judged by his songs. I'm certain there are many people who'd love to hear your songs, Mr. Bodley. Absolutely. I, for one, would love to hear more of your songs. Uh, really? Yes, really. Really? Truly? Yes, truly. Really. Oh, yes, you're right. Now I feel reborn. There's no reason for me to feel so forlorn. I shall sing to my heart's content. More noon and night, on and on and on. I won't give up without a fight. That's more like it. At least he's perked up enough to continue singing. Yeah, too right. That's a relief. In return for the cheer that you did bring, now more than ever I'll continue to sing. You're very welcome. Still, it seems like there's another minstrel somewhere in town. Oh, kindly duo, what could it be? What brings you here to Bartley? What would you ask of me? Oh, I almost forgot. Mr. Bartley, have you seen a black cat anywhere around here? I've seen it, seen it, I've seen a black cat. Since you are asking, I'll sing about that. A beautiful black cat with fur so sleek, chased in chase, ran to the main street. Three nights gave chase, but it didn't last. The cat got away by running so fast. That's it, Luke. Eve must have gone to the main street. Come on, Maya. Let's go that way. Yeah, you mentioned something about Eve being chased. You better hurry. All right, let's go. This isn't the main street, but... You know, maybe there's somewhere, someone around here. No? Damn, for real? Which way is main street again? That's Main Street. I still haven't gotten one of the coins here. We will talk to the knights in a minute. This coin is of the utmost importance. Where is it? Yeah, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get you. No, okay. Thought it might be that flag, but... Where are you? You fucking coward. I'm gonna get you. Wait, was it that? No. Where? I know I'm missing you. I have scrolled over the entire fucking thing. God. Wait. Nope. Where is it? What the fuck?
Bruh! Where is it? Ah, whatever. If we don't hurry up and find that cat, it'll get away from us! Come on, give me a break! Just how long do you intend to chase after a cat? We don't get back to our post, the captain's going to blow his top! Even so, I'm sure that cat was a stray. Surely it's part of the code of chivalry to rescue people and animals without distinction. But we've done nothing but chase it around! Sheesh, why do you have to be in our squad? Did you hear that, Maya? Those knights are talking about a cat! Yup, and I bet they're talking about Eve. Let's ask them. Um, excuse me, sir. We're looking for a black cat. And we overheard you talking about a cat. We're looking for a black cat wearing a purple neck scarf. Okay, it's purple, not red. So it is not a ghost trick reference. Eh, a cat, you say? That must be. Hey, wait a minute! Aren't these two the ones who gave Inquisitor Barnum such a hard time at the trial? Aha, <laughs> these are the ones, all right. They're with that defender. What business could you possibly have with us? Be off with you, or feel our wrath! I know nothing of this cat, you see. Eh, but I, I heard you. You were talking about chasing a cat. Yeah, I heard you too. You were worried about her escaping. Even so, I don't... I don't know what I don't know, and can't tell what I can't tell. Come on, just tell us. We need to find her. You can ask as much as you like. We know nothing. Saw nothing. Heard nothing. Yeah, yeah. An evening stroll. Three disgruntled knights claim to have seen Eve wander by down the street. Sadly, they are not very cooperative and supplied a rather dubious set of clues. Use the map and the knight's clues to trace Eve's path through the town, starting at S and ending at the cat icon. Okay. We do not pass the same spot more than once. Okay. Hmm. So there's two straight lines and a left turn. I mean, that seems like a no-brainer to me, personally. Eh? Let's do it, Luke. No? Damn. And we Damn. were doing so well together. Pay special attention to the clue given by the knight in the middle. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck! It's a four-way. Well, wait, no, I got that. I got that right there. But wait. Oh, that's not a corner, that's a... Ah, so it'd be probably more like this then? Let's do it, Miss Moya. If I get it wrong twice. Hey, there we go. Just what I'd Look at my scrunklies. It looks as if Eve took a little stroll down to the center of town. After her! See nothing here, nothing, no nothing! We got nothing to tell. Uh -huh. We fucked out where Eve is, Maya. And, do you, and you know where she's going, don't you? I sure do. It looks like she ran off towards the town square. Oh no! We didn't even tell you! Now did you work it out? Did you read our minds? You witches! No, the answer was in the puzzle. Say, shouldn't you be getting back before your captain goes ballistic? Touche! We're close to finding Eve, Luke. Right, let's go and find her before she goes off running somewhere else. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I can really get used to this whole puzzle solving thing. You know, it's like the moment I saw the answer, it just felt so right. And I was right. Hey, I was right too, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go. All right, let's move. Uh, center of town is, uh... Oh, wait, why did I press B? Why does... 
Why is that a function? <laughs> Why didn't you press B and it resets your progress on where you were moving? God. It's... it's you! Hi, Inquisitor. Darklaw? Hello to you, too. <laughs> oh, if it isn't you, too. Isn't it a bit late for you to be out here strolling around? Oh, wait, what if I don't want to speak just yet? Aren't you tired, Luke? Why don't we take a short break? I'm not a little boy. I can walk. I'm not tired at all. I hope Eve didn't get inside. Even she, even she wouldn't be able to sneak in unnoticed with those guards around. A bell this large could probably be heard throughout the whole town. Did they ever ring it, though? Miss Maya, have you heard it? Um, nope. Maybe it's broken? Boink. One. Nice. Two. Nice. Where's that third one? It's gotta be around here somewhere. different somehow. Well, well. Aren't you quite the inquisitive ones? I'm the inquisitor here, remember? Anyway, I happen to be on duty. On duty? This late at night? As long as there are witches in this town, there will always be crimes of magic. I'm directing the knight's inquiry into a certain incident involving this bell tower. A certain incident? Oof, why is Luke's voice getting being so fucking rough on me tonight? Jesus! I keep needing to hydrate. <laughs> Three months ago, an alchemist residing not far from here was murdered. Naturally, it was at the hand of a witch. But did you say an alchemist? Full metal, even? A witch murdered an alchemist using magic? That's terrible. Indeed, it was a dreadful incident and is the only case to remain unsolved. The only incident to remain unsolved? That's the reason we are working on it through the night. Go home to the comfort of your beds. We wouldn't want you meeting a witch now, would we? Hey, I'm no child, you know? That's we, Luke. We happen to be searching for a cat. It's a black cat called Eve. Eve? Hey, have you seen her? I have seen no sign of any cat. Not around here. Uh, uh, really? But she has to be somewhere nearby. Come on, Luke, let's look around a bit more. Yeah, right you are, Maya. Well, thank you, High Inquisitor Darklaw. I don't really know what you did, but thank you. <laughs> Maya Fay. Yes, uh, w what is it? Wait, that's weird. I don't remember telling you my name. There are witches in the most unlikely of places. Like that one right behind you! You must remain vigilant. What did she mean by this? Hey Maya! Over here! I found Eve! What's the matter? Come on! Um, yeah, okay, I'm coming. She is the High Inquisitor and leader of the Inquisition. Her stance on witches and witchcraft is strict, as is her attitude towards her subordinates. Working alone relentlessly at night, she appears to embrace a hate for witches. As yet, I do not know why. Yo! Mom, there's a weird cat! Eve, we found you! Finally! I'm so glad you're safe. Miss Bella would be so upset if anything happened to you. She sure would, Luke. She said that Eve is a real friend. Hopefully the boss will feel better too when we get Eve back home. 
I'm sure she will. Come on then, let's go back to the bakery. All right, let's move after I get some more coins. Oi! Hello, anyone home? Can I interest you in ordering freshly baked bread from the bakery? You're so business-minded, Miss Maya, but maybe you shouldn't yell in the people's windows at night. More crimson, I suppose. Oi! There it was. Alright, to the bakery. It took us longer than I thought it would. I wonder if everyone's sleeping made these starts playing. Oh, don't do that to me. I'm get, it, it's gonna get stuck in my head. Oi! It's getting close to daybreak. You mean sunbreak? What? I, I, we should enter quietly and try not to wake anyone. <laughs> Where on earth could those two have gone? After what happened earlier, you think they'd know better than to go wandering out at night like this? It's getting bright out already. I'm starting to worry they came across a witch. If they don't show up soon, I suggest we all go looking for them. After a trial like that, it makes me wonder where they get their energy from. Oh, Eve! Where were you? Ah, good morning, everyone. What do you mean, good morning? Where have you two been this whole time? Sorry, we didn't expect to be gone for so long. I'd have thought you'd know better, Luke. What were you, what were you doing out there at this hour? I'm sorry, Professor. We went looking for Eve. Looking for Eve, you say? You mean you were both concerned that Eve was missing? Well, when Isabella comes home, she'll want Eve here to meet her. Won't she? After all, Eve is like a member of the family. Oh, you dear, that's very considerate of you. Thank you. But I want you to promise me that you won't go wandering around late at night like that again. It's just not safe, what with all those witches out there. We promise. I'm sorry, boss. I'm sorry, too. I should say, it's nearly morning already. Why don't you both go and get yourselves all cleaned up? I've already prepared breakfast, so jump to it! Yes, ma'am! Come to think of it, I'm so hungry. I can eat one of Mary's goats. How about you, Luke? Now that you mention it, I'm definitely ready for breakfast. both certainly love your food. Personally, I'd just like a little more sleep. <sighs> right then, let's eat breakfast and make our way to the court. Right you are, Professor. I'm sure Spella must be feeling lonely. Oh, and Mr. Wright, could you perhaps take something from the bakery for her? You bet. I'm sure Spella will be glad to get some of Patty's freshly baked bread. Come on, what are you all waiting for? Breakfast is ready. All right, all right. We're, we're coming. Well then, let's dig in. As it seems we are all ready to go, shall we make our way to the court? So does everyone remember how to get there? Sure, we just head east from here and it's on the other side of the forest, isn't it? Boy, I spell must be feeling so sad and lonely. Let's get a move on! Let's go! 
Let's go. Yo, go. Welcome, welcome. How about some fresh goat's milk from a freshly milked goat? Well, I'll be. If it isn't you, Lord. What a coincidence seeing you here. Hey, Miss Mary, I thought you were selling milk on the outskirts of the market. Oh, that's right, I do, but not everyone can get to the market to buy their milk, child. That's why Snowy and I sometimes set up a stall in town like this. It must be hard having to do it right after the trial like this. We should deliver the milk while it's still fresh, you see. There's no way we can go take you a break. Especially not after what happened last trial with the... with the soul in it. Luke, don't. Oh, right. <laughs> not only that, but we hardly feel like resting. Not after all that excitement. We'd never experienced a trial like that. Who would have thought that sweet flower seller Kira would turn out to be a witch? Rip to her, but I'm built different. Such an innocent face, too. You'd never believe she could have done it, don't you think so, my little snowykins? <laughs> At any rate, it was a real shock seeing an execution by fire. Maybe so, but on the other hand, it couldn't be helped. After all, she was a witch. Anyway, at times like these, a little puzzle can help clear the air. Isn't that right, my little fluffy dumpling? Puzzle time. Ooh. Gavin Goots. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Five goats are put out to pasture. Each has its own unique color and pattern. Not only that, they each have a unique pattern to their bleeding. However, these conversation-loving goats all suddenly started talking at once saying the conversation into complete chaos. Use the picture above to work out which goat is saying what. Also pay attention to each goat's color and pattern. Oh boy, do I really want to do this one though? I don't think I want to do that. No, no. <laughs> My brain hurts already. I don't want to push it. Fuck you. <laughs> Get out of my sight. All right, let's go, let's go to court. It was this way, right? They said go east, which is from there, yeah. Or I guess... Ah, east here. Yeah, that makes sense. Coming back here makes me remember yesterday's trial. A spell is still being held somewhere in the building. Yeah, and it's up to us to get her out as soon as we can. First thing we should do is make sure we're allowed to see her. You there! Yes, you! Uh-oh! There's nothing like a confrontation first thing in the morning to keep you on your toes. Um, we're here to, uh, you know, uh, visit our clients. It's not you we're interested in. It's Mr. Dark Hat over there. He's to come immediately with us. Uh, who, sir? Me, sir? Yes, sir! You, sir! What have you done this time? Uh, professor, did you do something? Hmm, I wonder what it could be. L Luke, do you have any idea? <laughs> professor! Don't play innocent with us! The order came from the storyteller himself! You have been personally summoned to the audience room to see the storyteller! The audience room? Meeting the storyteller in person is the highest honor that can be bestowed upon a person. There's no one in all of Labyrinthia who would be proud to meet him. That goes for us knights too, although such an honor is almost unheard of. Nevertheless, those were the orders. To have Herschel Layton make his way to the audience room. Very well, and in this audience room, uh, the storyteller will be waiting to see me, is that correct? What? Why does the storyteller want to see you, Professor? I don't mean that in like an offensive way, but yeah, what's going on here anyway? Would it be possible to go there after having seen Miss Cantabella? The storyteller's order is of the absolute highest priority. Nothing can take precedence. Not only that, but in any event, you are not permitted to see the accused. Why would that be? Permission to see the accused is restricted to Defender Roy and his assistant. Those are the orders! What do you make-
make of that, Professor? Make of it what you will. Orders are orders. Very well. Let's go and meet the storyteller. That's more like it. You fucking bitch. <laughs> Professor, are you really planning on me with the storyteller? It might be a trap. Mm, while I do sense potential for a scheme here, I'd be foolish to pass up the opportunity to meet with this town's creator. There are rather too many things that I would like to ask him. I see. If the professor is going, then I'm going to. After all, I am the professor's apprentice. Be careful, Luke. I'm sure you'll be just fine as long as you stay with the professor. I will, and please give Espella our best. Oh, and Maya, could you give Espella the bread for Mrs. Eclair? Sure thing, Luke. Well, if you've finally finished talking, I would suggest wasting no more time. You'll find the audience room beyond the guard post. East of the Great Archive. And Defender, you should see the accused. Well, it would seem we must go our separate ways for the time being. Yeah, looks like it. Well, take care, Professor. And you, Mr. Wright, I wish you both luck. Sheesh. Well, there they go. Do you think they'll be okay? The professor and Luke? I think they can take care of themselves. Anyway, uh, we should hurry up and talk to Espella. Right. Even though she tries to hide it, inside she must be terrified. What if she's found guilty of being a witch? What would we do then? Last night we saw it with our own eyes. What would they do to witches? Murder! She went... Okay, I, I cut that way too soon. I don't even think that was audible. She went... It's not right. Any world where things like that are allowed to happen isn't right. I know, Maya, but for now, we have no choice. clear a spell of the charges. We need to focus on that and that alone. The Great Witch Bazella. I wonder why they keep suspecting a spell of being her. I don't know, but if we're lucky, maybe she'll be able to set some light on it. Hey, Defender! It's time for you to see the accused. Well, this is it, Nick. Sure is. Let's go, Maya. The Death Knell Dungeon. No coins. Damn. That's how you know it's serious. Ah, Mr. Wright, Maya. Espella! So this is the Death Knell Dungeon. Looks more like solitary confinement to me. Don't worry, I'm fine. Really. I was a little surprised at how hard the bed was, though. Espella? Oh, that's right. I have something for you here. The boss made it for you. Look, it's your special walnut bread. You should try it. And Patty made that for me. Thank you, Maya. We'll get you home soon. Then we can all sit down and eat Patty's freshly baked bread together. Yeah. That would be nice. We're gonna have you out of here soon, so don't you worry, Espella. But are you sure you want to do that? What are you talking about, Espella? Do you really want to continue defending me, Mr. Wright? What? Of course I do! Who made you say that? You do both know what I've been charged with, don't you? I'm just sure we do. They're accusing you of being Bazella, the source of all witches here in Labyrinthia. That's right. And anyone who def who dead 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 anyone who defends us uh, de 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 Perry. Perry, please. That's right. And anyone who defends such a re anyone who defends such a suspect, anyone who defends such a sus, will also come under sus. 
themselves. People are likely to criticize you and make you suffer, all on my account. I can't ask you to defend me. I don't want you suffering because of me. Listen to me, Espella. We're already suffering just seeing you here in this prison. Do you honestly think we just stand around not doing anything? Mr. Wright. Hey, I think I get it, Espella. I bet you're just worried that Nick will slip up the way he always does. Huh? Trust me, there's nothing to worry about. The Professor and Luke are on our side, too. Huh? No, no, that's not what I meant. I wouldn't think that at all. Mr. Wright, you were just amazing. You and Mr. Layton both. It was like you were working magic together. Well, that settles it then, Espella. And don't worry. We're gonna be there for it. We're gonna be there for you. We'll fight to the very end. The two of us, the Professor and Luke, will all be working together on this thing. We won't let you down. What's wrong, Espella? It's just that the only one who's ever been this kind to me before is Aunt Patty. I, I don't know what to say. Espella? I'm not sure how to say this, but it seems that the townsfolk are distancing themselves from you. It's as if they fear you for some reason. Yeah, I can't believe they all think a cute girl like you could be the great witch. Spella, we heard from High Inquisitor Darklaw that there's a reason why people are so suspicious of you. If it's okay with you, we'd like to we'd like you to tell us what that reason is. The reason the townsfolk suspect you. And why they're so distant. Alright, I guess I never had the chance to explain properly. Eh? It's true that the townsfolk look at me differently, and the reason for that is because I am... Oh! Oh! Pain. Well, Professor, we've reached the library. And the place at which the storyteller is waiting for us is east of here, isn't it? Indeed. According to the night, the audience room is past the guard post. I wonder what the creator of Labyrinthia wants to talk to you about, Professor. It's too soon to assume anything, Luke, but whatever it might be, I have a few things I would like to ask him to should be thankful if this opportunity has come so soon. Even if it is part of some scheme. Let's go, Professor! To the audience room! Alright, let's go! Hey, you two. Talk to me, talk to me. Uh, aren't you Herschel Layton, the Hatter? Uh, yes, haven't we met before? No, you must be thinking of my brother. We have very similar voices and similar professions and the same face. In fact, we're basically alike except for our names. Uh, what are your names? I'm Knightley, but that's spelt with an N. His name is Knightley, but it's spelt with a K. Wow. Well, I'm not a hatter, although I certainly am Herschel Layton. I have been told that my presence is requested in the audience room. I've definitely heard something about that, but it's beyond me why. With all due respect, why would the storyteller invite mere commoners to the audience room? Aren't people normally allowed to visit? Of course not! Both the audience room and the tower in which he resides are areas of strict surveillance. One does not simply visit the storyteller. Did you say... tower? The storyteller's tower, naturally. Don't tell me you've never heard of it. He only comes out of his tower to appear before the people in his parades. 
The audience room is where the storyteller comes whenever there is a parade. We, the Order of the Knights, provide his protection from this guard post. We feel honored by his presence, even if he doesn't speak to us. I see. It would seem we are extremely privileged to have been invited here. <laughs> Don't let it get to your head. Wait here while I open up the gate. Come to think of it, during the parade, the storyteller did seem to be held in high esteem by all the townsfolk. Indeed, Luke. After all, he is the author of this town's story. So he is effectively like some kind of god. Like a god? No! Oh, someone tell me this isn't happening! There seems to be some commotion over there. It's that night! He's going back this way and he doesn't look too happy. <laughs> oh, this is bad. Really bad. What am I going to do? What's the matter? Well, actually, Dark Hat, the gate won't open. It's broken and I can't fix it. So what happens now? I wish I knew. What am I to do? We need to do something. We can't keep the storyteller waiting. If we do, there goes my career as a knight. Um, unless, uh, aren't you two meant to be good at finding people? Finding people? I wouldn't say we're particularly good. Don't say that, I need your help here. There is one knight who's able to fix the gates, but he's busy training with the other knights. I'd like to call them back here without disturbing the others, but no, but they all look the same. The only way to identify him is to look for a knight with an unusually shaped sword. Unusually shaped sword? How interesting. And no, it's not a euphemism. I wasn't thinking that, but all right. Professor, doesn't that mean? Indeed, my boy. It means we can tackle this the way we would a puzzle. So, will you find him? Okay, I'll see what I can do. Let's go! The meat! Not standard issue. It's lunchtime, and the knights are all eager to eat their share. They all stab their swords to this massive piece of meat at the same time. One of the swords is not standard night issue and has an oddly curved blade. <laughs> Examine the blades and find the owner of the strange sword. The Miet. So true. Hmm. I wonder. If we if we draw the lines, it's like. Bam, bam. Hmm. That I don't. Hmm. I don't think that's the way to go about it. One hint. Try using the memo for. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. You know what? Sure, sure. I'll try again. Okay, but wait, 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 I just realized. If we're going like that, this guy's starts real low and goes real high. That would be pretty curved. Let's see if I've proven myself. Eh, yeah, there we go. You should expect no less from a gentleman. There we go. That's how we do it. That is very impractical for fighting. Thanks to you, sir. Ha uh, I've been enabled to have it repaired immediately. Uh, this, that's not the voice you had before. Um, uh, I mean, uh, I've been able to have it repaired immediately. Professor, is he... You're not really his brother, are you? What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, okay, I guess we're not going to... Get, uh, 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 move along, then. I'm glad you were able to fix it. A puzzle like that is a piece of cake for the professor. Hmm, as I suspected all along, 
You're certainly no ordinary gentleman. Sir Hatter, Herschel Layton shall henceforth be allowed to pass through this gate freely. Thank you, kind sir. Please make your way to the storyteller as swiftly as possible. What about you? Usually, common townsfolk aren't allowed through this gate. Only the knights are permitted to go beyond this guard post into the storyteller's domain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's a hidden puzzle here. I wonder where it is and if I'll have the uh, want to do it. Oh, there's so many of them. Wow! No matter where I look, there are knights everywhere! Yes, indeed. The knights have their guard post on this side of the gate. Given the grandness of the scale, I imagine they are living here too. But I wonder where exactly around here we're supposed to meet the storyteller. I to go to the audience room, wherever that is. With a name as grand as audience room, you'd think it would be easy to notice. Hmm. Luke, can you see the long flight of stairs over there? I think we should go and take a look. A flight of stairs? Oh, I see it! There's also a building over there. Looks rather stately. hey -o. Good to have ya. Uh, glad to hear you found me uh, through the VOD channel, that's rare. <laughs> There's also a building over there, it looks rather stately. Do you think that's where the audience room is? Indeed, my boy. However, there seems to be something going on over there. And from the looks of things, I don't think we'll be able to just ignore it and stroll right by. At any rate, uh, let's go and take a look. All right. Well, first we look for some coins. Wait. Oh, the VOD's on Twitch. Ah, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I always, uh, I always just sort of assume, but you know, yeah. That's valid as well. <laughs> All right, where's that last coin? It's got... Wait, was it three? I forget now. Tell me. Yeah, it's three. Okay. I should probably just assume it's three unless it tells me otherwise. Uh, da, 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 da. It's gotta be around. Come on. Come on, come on. Uh, it's no big deal. I already have like 70. What's one? Well, it matters for me. <laughs> It matters to me, because I am very, very particular. Hold up, hold up. Just gonna do a little learning all this morning. Uh, all right, you enjoy that shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. I will stream uh, AI the Somnium and Files Nirvana Initiative at some point. Don't know when. I was going to do it in July, but I'm thinking maybe August or September now. Either way, it is happening at some point, because the first game made a very good impression. Hints in this game do not seem great either. Yeah, yeah, it just briefly sparkles. And I mean, oh, you mean the hints from the puzzles, yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. Hey, you. Hmm. Hmm, hmm. Mm, this is no good. It's been three days and three nights, but I still don't get it. Understand. Whoa, don't frighten me like that. How long have you been there? We've been here for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose I can tell you. See, I've been doing my mind training. Us knights must train, not just physically, but mentally too. Training of the mind? How delightful. As a gentleman, I always endeavor to keep my thinking flexible too. <laughs> Your comment exudes confidence. And if you are so self-assured, why not try solving this puzzle? Is a chess puzzle based on the brave fight between knights. The trouble is, no matter how hard I try, I can't defeat the Black Knight. Well, you need the legendary sword Caliburn for that, god. Chess skirmish. Two opposing sets of knight chess pieces are engaged in battle. In order to win, your chess piece must topple the enemy piece. 
Chest Knights move two squares forwards and one square perpendicular on each turn. The initial direction can be up, down, left, or right. Be careful the board is filled with pits and spaces that will move your piece in the direction shown. Okay, okay. I got this. Jumping to an opposing Black Knight piece will remove it from the board. Defeat all the Black Knight pieces on the board. Okay. Hmm. Let's topple this bitch. Uh, and that'll put me over here, right? Yeah. And from there, I can get there. And then here. And here. Wait. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah! Allow me to show you my puzzle-solving skills. Second guess myself for a second, but then I remember. Then you I realized, oh, yeah, 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 no yeah, less okay. from a gentleman. There we go. Easy peasy. Ow, ow. Oh, my fucking back has been killing me lately. Whoa, you beat the Black Knight! I can just remember how you did that. Mm. All right. Now if I could beat him, he could keep guard of this area next week instead of me. Keep guard? Instead of you? No, it's um, <laughs> purely for mind training, believe me. Sounds a little fishy to me. Oof. Well, uh, who else is around? Damn, two of them! How many times do I gotta tell ya? I ain't the suspicious guy you're after. Mm. You expect us to believe you just because you say so, eh? You can save us all time and trouble here. Just admit your guilt and be done with it. But you gotta be kidding me. This is a false accusation. Come on, why won't you listen to me? I admit my face might look a little scary, sure, but I'm telling you straight. My pals are always saying there's no one with a pure heart than good old Gunner. Oh, spare me. We're getting nowhere here. Hey, knights! Yes, sir! Put this miserable wretch into solitary confinement. Yes, sir, Captain! Oi, oi! What are you doing? I'm innocent! Innocent, I tell ya! You seem to have your hands full here. May I ask what happened? Hey, if it isn't you two, you mean to tell me you're the ones that the storyteller has summoned? That's us all right. So you can't go chasing us around the way you did before. Ugh, rats. By the way, Captain, what was that man been accused of? What has he done? He is guilty of carrying out a heinous crime of assault and theft. How many times have I got to say it? Warn me, it's a false accusation! I'm totally innocent! Silence! Who else could have done it? Hmm. Would you tell me a little more about this? Well, I had a feeling you'd want to know. You seem to like poking your nose into other people's business. A series of thefts have been occurring in this town. At the same time, a suspicious figure has been sighted. Now I ask you, does this man not look suspicious to you? Clearly, it has to be him. You got all wrong! I heard there was a thief in the area. That's why I teamed up with them townsfolk to keep a lookout for the blighter. That ain't all. I even found a way to make sure every dang corner of this town was being watched. Place ourselves in positions where we didn't obstruct one another's line of sight. Catch my drift? The suspicious figure you guys mentioned? There ain't no way that was me! So you're saying that you watched every part of the town, while at the same time avoiding overlapping each other's search? That's impossible. You committed the crimes are lying to cover yourself! I wonder if you're perhaps mistaken. It might just be true. For example, if they position themselves like this... Right, there are reports of a thief lurking around the town center. The town's health guard charge of guard duty. There are two conditions to a stakeout. They have a perfect view of all the streets, and their viewing range never overlaps. With that in mind, you think you can place the townsfolk in their correct spots? Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a, there's one of these puzzles in like every late in game. Or at the very least, like most of them. Alright. Alright, so that is, uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Whoop. 
All right. Uh, we put that one there. If we put another one of these here, that would be good. Uh. Hmm, not quite. Oh, there's something. Nope. 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 I guess. And that too. Uh, did you go here? Yeah, yeah, that would go here. Yeah! Let's see if I've proven myself. You nice. should expect no less from a gentleman. Excellent! It turns out the dubious looking gentleman was telling the truth. Hmm. I would have never guessed such a solution could exist. So do you believe me now? I was telling the truth. The real culprit must still be on the loose, going around stealing stuff in broad daylight. Hmm. Then it looks like we've got no choice. Let him go. We better head back to the crime scene and go over it again with a fine tooth comb. Yes, Captain! Well, I'm glad we were able to sort out the misunderstanding. I don't know who you two are. So a bit too sharp to be some regular townsfolk. Not at all, we're nothing so special. Just a couple of regular English gentlemen. Hmm. English, eh. So what is that, your title? <laughs> well, whatever it may be, it's not normal to be summoned directly by the storyteller himself. It would appear you're indeed something special. The storyteller is in the audience room. I wouldn't keep him waiting if I were you. As for the audience room, it's in the building at the top of these stairs. That building up there, just as we thought. Just mind your manners when in the presence of the storyteller, do you hear me? If I hear any sign of trouble, you'll regret it! We'll be on our best behavior, so please keep your hand off your sword, you're scaring me. Just goes to show how highly the knights regard the storyteller. Now then, let's move on, Luke. Right, let's go, Professor. All right, we're moving. I don't actually know if I got that hidden puzzle or not, but you know, whatever. There's another one here. Maybe I'll get that one. The storyteller should be in here, right? I'm starting to feel a little nervous. Hmm, this area is totally deserted. All I can hear is the wind. It looks as if not even the knights are allowed to come up here. He really is treated almost like a god. I wonder what someone like that wants to talk to us about. Mm. It doesn't seem to be a trap. What if once you're in, you can't get out? We should proceed with caution. Oh, I knew there would be a coin there. We just had to read the fluff first. Oi! I can make out the outline of a tall building in the fog. This could be the tower the knights spoke of. It could rival a skyscraper! In that buildings like that in the Middle Ages, surely. Hmm. All right. Uh. Oi. Bitch. Give me that. Knock knock. Damn! Everybody has the same doorbell in this bitch. Huh, Professor? The, the door won't open. Hello? Is anyone there? No reply. It appears there is no keyhole. This is no ordinary lock mechanism. Inviting someone to visit you only to lock them out, that's a bit rude. Just a moment, Luke. If you look closely, you'll see that there's a puzzle built in there. I believe this may be a test, Luke. A test to determine whether we qualify for an audience with the storyteller or not. Hmm, that's a bit off, isn't it? When it comes to puzzles, we'll be glad to oblige, won't we, Professor? Indeed, my boy. Let's show our metal. Oh, God. I think I remember this one. Here's a panel of numbers. The numbers range between 1 and 6. Touching the buttons on the touchscreen will increase and decrease the numbers. Arrange the numbers to read 3333. Three, three, three. You think you can do it in only four turns? All oh, right, it's in, it's in the limit, too. Uh, all right. Uh, 
Okay, if it's one through six, if I did the bottom one first, that would be six, five, four, three. So that would get me there at least, wouldn't it? Okay, that's two. Uh, hmm, but then the other ones as well. Hmm. Uh, okay, let's so make it two, two, four, 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 two. That would be a good place to be, I think. For sure. Wait, that's down two. Wait! Wait, 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 wait. I do it like that. Yeah, right, that one. Allow yeah. me to show you my puzzle easy solving peasy. skills. Come you just gotta give it a little bit of thinking. Puzzles are there to be solved. Getting the buttons of Ramsey, it doesn't, yeah, it does, that doesn't work. You gotta realize that. Wait, the, is it, Professor? Yeah. That should open the door. It would seem that we have proven ourselves worthy. Labyrinthia's creator is waiting for us inside. The creator of this town. I wonder what he intends to say. Are you all right, Luke? I imagine you must be a little nervous. H who, me? Well, to be honest, I suppose I am. Just a little. Seems hard. I mean, when you realize, like, the things and, like, the patterns, it's not... But don't worry, Professor. Also, I I've played this, this game before. I'm just Let's doing go. it for the stream, Let's so I might have remembered some shit. <laughs> like, subconsciously. Very well. Muster your courage. We're going in. Right you are, Professor. All right, let's go. <gasps> and thus, the guests finally made their appearance. Hey. I bid you welcome to Labyrinthia, the town governed by stories. I've been waiting for you, Herschel Layton. I believe I should say it is an honor, Mr. Storyteller. You're the creator of Labyrinthia. But why did you call the professor here? I have summoned you. So that I may ask you why you are here. I mean, it's all in the story, isn't it? I beg your pardon? What, what are you talking about? You wrote the lore. Mm. In writing the story, I provide everything. And in turn take everything away. I give each person a story and weave their intertwining webs of fate. However, it would appear that interlopers have found their way into the story. The two honestly though, just a, just a cool concept for, honestly just a cool concept for a character though, yeah. You mean to say that my presence here was not written in your story? Precisely. And so I must ask you, exactly how did you find your way into this world? In truth, we found ourselves here somewhat inadvertently. We were brought here by a book. A book called the Historia Labyrinthia. Well, this game kind of pops off. For a while it does, yeah, but we'll get to that. <laughs> mm. I am led to believe it was you who wrote that book. Surely you cannot deny it. It would appear I have found it. The source of the corruption within my story. Corruption? In other words, you consider our presence to be a hindrance to your story. Is that correct? Not only you. There was another man who tried to change the course of my story. Ah. You mean Carmina Accidenti? Carmine, 
So, there is a connection between him and the two of you. I could have sworn it was Carmen before and not Carmine, but I've been wrong before, so. <laughs> Oops. Your presence here is, shall I say, a slight inconvenience. The story of Labyrinthia is about to take a turn towards its grand finale. Although maybe they just didn't say it before. Grand finale? No, they had to. Because, like, the letter earlier was written aloud. Indeed. A conclusion that requires a climax of epic proportions. The identity of the great witch Bazella is made public. She is tried in the court and yeah, finally I guess both could work, destroyed. Yeah. At last... Peace will be restored to the town. The final scenario is close at hand. The, the identity of the Great Witch? Do you mean... Huh. It's true that the townsfolk look at me in a different way. And the reason for that is because I am the storyteller's daughter. You're what? Espella! You're the storyteller's daughter? I didn't see that coming. When I first came down into the town, everyone was so friendly. Perhaps they thought that if they got to know me, things would go well for them. That was the impression I had. Hmm, that sounds like the kind of thing people would probably do. But obviously not me. I wouldn't do anything like that. No one's accusing you of anything, Maya. But unfortunately, things didn't work out the way people hoped they would. Hmm, well, people should realize that good things don't come easy. Then one day, someone just happened to bump into me in the town, and I was knocked over. Later that night, the same person was attacked by a witch and killed by her magic. I don't know whether it was just a coincidence or not, but... After that, everyone's attitude towards me has changed. So I'm saying things like, it's best to keep away from her, or you'll have a bad story written about you. All because I'm the storyteller's daughter. What's the storyteller thinking? What do you mean? Well, he has a daughter stuck in a place like this. And if he didn't write such a bad story, she wouldn't have to suffer like this. You have a good point there, Maya. Anyway, the investigation has only just begun. Spell, if it's okay with you, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Of course, I'd like to help in any way I can. I've got to gather as much information as I can. Alright, uh, tell me about the storyteller. Might be difficult for you to answer, but... Why are you not living with the storyteller? I mean, with your father. I did live with him before. We lived together on the edge of the town in the storyteller's tower. The storyteller's tower? When I was little, he was very kind and always listened to what I had to say. But then, at some point or other, he started to become distant. If you think about it, I guess it's only natural. Because he had to write the story for every single person in the town. Spella. As he became busier and busier, I was left alone in the tower. And that's the reason I decided to leave home with Eve and live in the town. I stayed with Aunt Patty and helped out at the bakery. 
Now you two are at the shop too, but my dad... What's the deal with the storyteller? When you write a story where his own daughter is the great witch Bazella. Maybe the professor will be able to find out the storyteller's true motives. Uh, ask about Patty. What about Patty? Does she know anything about your past? Have you ever told her that you're the storyteller's daughter? Yes, she knows. When the other people in town started avoiding me, Aunt Patty was the only one who stood by me that whole time. Yeah, Patty's always looking out for you. There's so much I have to thank her for. It's been five years since I left my dad and started living with Aunt Patty. She's always been so kind. She's been like a mother to me. Now that you mention it, what about your real mother, Isabella? She... actually, I can't remember anything about her. According to my dad, she died in an accident when I was still young. And that's really all I know. He didn't tell me any more than that. I see. Hmm. The Great Witch Bazella. Aspella, we believe in you. There's no way you could be the Great Witch Bazella. That's right. That's why we'll find the real Great Witch. The real Great Witch. But the Great Witch is only a character of legend. How could you possibly find her? Well, admittedly. At the moment, we have no real leads. Actually, to be honest, we know next to nothing about Labyrinthia. We were supposed to have been living with you for five years now, but that memory turned out to be completely phony. Do you have any ideas at all, Spella? Anything that could give us a clue? I guess it's a lot to ask. All magic-related incidents are thoroughly investigated by the Knights of the Inquisition. And if there were any clues as to the whereabouts of the Great Witch, then I believe they would have found them. I guess you're right. As far as I know, there's not a single incident that has remained unsolved by the Inquisitors. Wait a minute, that's not right. What is it, Maya? The part about there being no unsolved incidents left. What? Last night, me and Luke ran the High Inquisitor Darklaw. Wait, what? You saw High Inquisitor Darklaw? Yep, she said she was investigating some kind of incident with magic. She said that it took place three months ago, I think. Apparently, it's the only incident that has remained unsolved. An unsolved incident. Oh! Not you mention it, I remember hearing rumors about such a case. The only magic incident in Labyrinthia to remain unsolved, huh? Aspella, about that incident, could you tell us about it in more detail? I have to ask you to stop right there, Defender. Visiting time is up. You're to leave immediately. No way! We just got to the good part! Mr. Wright, Maya! I really don't know much about that incident, but perhaps you could try asking an Inquisitor about it. Okay, Aspella. Thanks for the help. All right, we'll see you again real soon. Keep your spirits up, Aspella. Thank you. Take care, both of you. Mr. Wright, Maya, they're both doing so much for me. I wonder if there's anything I could do for both of them in return. The Great Witch Bazella. Until now, I hadn't given it much thought. Great Witch, the legendary fire, flames, inferno. Oh my, what is this? My head hurts. unsolved incident of magic. I'm sure she said something about an alchemist who lost her life to a witch. An alchemist was attacked? Huh, sounds like a serious case. You got that from High Inquisitor Darklaw, right? That's right, when I was searching for Eve last night. I meant to tell you about it, but it totally slipped my mind. Hmm, the only unsolved incident, huh? That's suspicious, alright. This might just be the lead that'll take us to the Great Witch. 
Okay, let's get to investigating. We can do this thing. Yeah, so uh, I guess first we should check out the Inquisitor's Hall, right? We might just learn something there. Sure, let's get going. On the other hand, we may just learn how unwelcome we are there. Hey, come on, Nick. Enough of that wishy-washy attitude. I didn't even say anything. To the hall. Boop. <laughs> What's the dog doing? Wait a minute. That aggressive bark. Please tell me that isn't... Yo, there he is, the boy. Aha, it's Constantine. He looks happy to see us. Wish I could say the feeling was mutual. Once bitten, twice shy. That pretty much sums me up right now. Really? I don't know. I think he's looking much friendlier today if you ask me. See? Come on, Nick. Pet him just once. <laughs> ah! This one really, really hates me. Well, well, if it isn't Sir Blue Knight. Exactly what are you doing over there on all fours? Oh, Inquisitor Barnum! Um, glad to see you again. Actually, there's something we'd like to ask you about. Come on, Nick, stand up already! Oh, I'd like to meet that mutt's owner face to face. <laughs> How foolish. Constantine happens to be mine. A true knight's companion he is. He didn't waste time sticking his teeth into the likes of you. Uh, had a hunch. So Constantine really is your dog, huh? I admire the nerve of this guy. He sits back and lets his dog bite people. Uh, I mean, me. I mean people. I'm people. Never mind that. What is it that you want to talk about? Make it quick, Sub Blue Knight. So, you Inquisitors are the ones who investigate incidents of magic in this town, aren't you? Yes, of course. If you don't mind, we'd like to ask you about that unsolved incident with magic. There's one thing you must never forget. The Knights of the Inquisition excel at their work. Uh, right. All incidents of magic perpetrated by the witches are dealt with by the Inquisitors, without exception. Yeah, Layton vs. Wright has a great soundtrack. The same composer went on to do uh, the Great Ace Attorney 1 and 2, and uh, those soundtracks are also fantastic. Highly recommend. Spoken with that usual calm and collected air of confidence. That's interesting. You see, we heard different. Apparently, there's one particular incident that still remains unsolved. Something about an alchemist being murdered. Ring any bells? What? Who did you get that information from? We, um, well, High Inquisitor Darklaw. Well, why the blazes didn't you say so? You could have saved us some time. Huh? How is it my fault? The High Inquisitor has put me on the spot by leaking such information to the likes of you. Well, I suppose that leaves nothing for it. I shall tell you the whole story, since I do not believe in doing things by halves. Please, go ahead. For all ears. It was three months ago that an alchemist living near the town square was murdered. Sorry, Inquisitor Barnum, but I'm kind of lost already. Isn't there a difference between alchemy and magic? I mean, is there? When it comes to something that difficult, it will do no good asking me. Huh? It seems that while the townspeople respected him, they also treated him with caution. They respected him? He used his skills to make medical concoctions and acted much like a physician. The efficacy of his cures was almost like magic. He was famous within his neighborhood. In fact, he's sometimes re referred to as Dr. Belduke by the townspeople. At any rate, it's safe to say that Sir Belduke was no witch. How can you say for sure? That's simple. Sir Belduke was a man. Well, can't really argue with that. 
Sir Belduke came to a mysterious end three months ago. A mysterious end? There were two things about his death that cannot be explained rationally. Firstly, the murder scene. His body was discovered in his residence in the study. His room was locked, and there was no conceivable way the crime could have been committed except by witchcraft. Isn't that what people call a locked room mystery? Hmm? A what? Oh, uh, it's nothing, really. So what was the other mysterious thing? Secondly, until then, all incidents involving witches have been foretold in the story. Foretold in the story? In other words, predicted by the storyteller. However, the murder of Sir Belduc did not appear in the story. Such a thing had never occurred before. So, not only was this the only unsolved incident in Labyrinthia's history, but it was also the only incident not to be predicted by the storyteller. Hmm, this definitely sounds worth investigating. You certainly are an interesting one, Sir Blue Knight. Huh? You really think you can solve this incident alone when the Knights of the Inquisition have been working on it for three months? I must say, that is some confidence. Well, we won't know unless we try. You may risk becoming the target of some terrifying witch's vengeance. I'm hoping that was a joke. Well, I suppose you may as well take a look. Who knows, you may even find something. So Belduke's residence is just beyond the town square. Ask anyone around there and they'll soon point you in the right direction. Thank you, Inquisitor Barnum. Sir Blue Knight, I believe our courtroom battles are far from over. Until we meet again in court. I'll see you then, Inquisitor. Alright. Let's go uh, find that hat. The house. Hat? Why did I say hat? And, uh, if I had to assume, it would be somewhere... Come on, let me go. Yeah, around here. Well, we've reached the square, but I wonder where the alchemist's residence is. Hey, Nick! Look over there! There's a street leading away from the square. Hey, you're right. Let's go take a look. Oh shit, child. Hey, I thought you two were working at the bakery. Are you goofing off? Well, uh, not exactly. Actually, we thought we'd give up baking and try our hands at something else. Is that so? Sounds like a good idea. Your bread did taste a little unusual anyway. What? You mean our bread wasn't delicious? Yeah, that's strange. I mean, we used so much butter and needed that dough so hard. Just my opinion. Mind, I prefer my bread a little more fluffy and light. Oh, really? So, uh, just how fluffy and light are we talking here? Well, uh, maybe about as fluffy and light as in this puzzle. Yo, Cloud Maze 2! Navigate Maya through the clouds and help her find Phoenix. Jumping in the holes in the clouds will drop Maya to the level below. Likewise, jumping on the fluffy clouds or something, they're flying up to the level below. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so there's a hole there. Whoops. I need to pay more attention. Oh, I think I remember. I think I remember a gimmick with either this one or a later one. If there is a third cloud maze, God forbid. <laughs> I actually don't remember. Uh, damn.
Uh... Yeah, definitely got a trick to it. I just gotta figure out what and where. Uh... I'm not using a hint. The hints hardly help. Well, no, no, they do help. It's just they're not exactly the best. Oh! Damn! Come on, Maya! Oi! Hmm. There's Nick. Like a... Looking like a scrunkly. Alright. Uh, was this it? This might be it. I mean, it's going quite, I mean, it's quite a tangent. I would assume this is the way. Yep, this looks like it's it. Nice. Let's give this answer a try. All in a day's work for Maya Fey, Ace Assistant. All right, there we go. Easy peasy. Wow, impressive work. I really didn't expect you to solve that. Actually, uh, I thought the same thing too. Well, I knew I could do it. So what were you out of work bakers doing hanging around here anyway? We're investigating an incident involving the alchemist. Do you know anything about it? <laughs> Surely the Knights of the Inquisition are the ones you should ask. He can tell you a lot more than I can. You might be right about that. Even so, it's a right shame someone like him could get murdered. I often went to him myself to get medicine. He was always friendly and understanding. It seems like Sir Belduke was a good man. At least from what we've heard so far. I hope they managed to solve this case soon. Alright, uh. Move. The house. So this is Sir Belduke's residence. It definitely looks like an alchemist's house. I've never seen plants like these before. So what do we do now? Just because the owner's deceased, we can't exactly go barging in. Hmm, but have you noticed just how well kept his yard is? It looks like someone just is still living here. Someone has definitely been doing the upkeep around here, that's for sure. Hey, who's that over there? Ooh. Just a minute. I need to get these coins. I will talk with you in a moment. What? Oh. I saw a spark. Yep, there it is. Yeah, no, the spirit channeling stuff would definitely be uh, seen as witchcraft here. <laughs> My sincerest apologies. I'm afraid medicaments are no longer being provided here. Uh, huh? Did you not come here for medicaments of some kind? Um, no, we didn't come here for that. We're here to investigate the incident, the one involving Sir Belduke. Forgive me if I'm mistaken, but you do not look like members of the Knights of the Inquisition. I'm Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. And you? I'm guessing you live here? Indeed, my name is... Oh god, I always forget if it's Jean or John. Great Arrow, I was invited to the late... I was, in... I was butler to the late Master Belduke. Wow, a butler! Must be my first time meeting a real one. Well, Mr. Grey Earl, if you don't mind. I've been told that the incident involving your master was shrouded in mystery. Has he got something to do with the Great Witch Bazella? We're trying to investigate that at the moment. Great Witch Bazella, am I right in supposing that you are defending Isabella Cantabella? Well, actually, yes, yes we are. So you know Isabella, do you? That goes without saying, everyone around here knows her. 
Do you think you can help us? We're looking for leads. While he was alive, the Master taught me the value of investigating the truth that governs the natural world. If you too are investigating the truth, then it would be against his teachings for me not to cooperate with you. Would you both like to come in? We can discuss the matter further, inside. That would be great. Thank you, Mr. Grey Earl. Whoa, spoken like a true butler. He's a pretty cool guy, isn't he, Nick? What is this room? This is the room that Master Bell Duke kindly provided as my accommodation. So, uh, is this the room where the incident took place? That would be the master's study. It is the room right next door. <laughs> yeah, tiny. However, the state of the room has been carefully preserved since the incident three months ago. As such, entry into the room is not currently permitted. Really? Bummer. Is that by order of the Knights of the Inquisition by any chance? Yes, and as I have lived with Master since an early age, they also decided it would be only fitting for me to stay on and keep the, pi the place. Perry, come on. In order. So you've been looking after the place ever since Sir Belduke passed away? Yes, that's correct. Now then, is there anything further you wish to discuss? Uh, well... As I mentioned a moment ago, I know very little about this matter. As a matter of fact, it might be better to ask the Inquisitors. I can tell you one thing, though. Namely, what occurred before the incident. Before the incident? Yes. It was three months ago, around the time the Master Bell Duke was murdered. We were on our way back from collecting specimens for research, and it was already into the small hours of the morning. There was a thunderstorm on the way, and as the storm drew nearer, we quickly made our way home. Damn, I forgot how many, like, animated cutscenes they have in this one. Nice. Anyone would have been surprised at what we saw, but Master Belduke, well, how can I put this? He reacted in a most peculiar way. Unlike others who saw it, he seemed unsettled, as if he was truly afraid of something. Mm. After that bell tower appeared, he changed completely. Master Belduke became a different man. Wait a second! Did you just say a bell tower appeared? Hey, that explains it! That must be... What the High Inquisitor Darklaw meant when she mentioned an incident involving the bell tower. To this day, I do not know what the Master was so afraid of. Do you think it was connected in some way to his death? I think it must have been magic. I mean, for a bell tower to just appear like that. Mr. Grey Earl, do you mind if we have a look around? I know the Inquisitors have already carried out a full investigation, but there might just be a clue or two with some kind of connection to the Great Witch. Well, I suppose, providing I am allowed to accompany you, of course, there is sensitive equipment everywhere, and it is my responsibility to take care of it. I understand. We'll be careful. I wonder how the Professor and Luke are doing with their visit to the Storyteller. Yeah, I've been wondering about that, too. A chance to meet Labyrinthia's creator. Well, let's just hope they don't upset the guy and have some terrible plot twists written about them. It only happened if it was you that visited the storyteller, Nick. The professor would never let anything like that happen. I've got a feeling they'll come back with some pretty useful leads. We have to do our best, too, Nick. Let's keep up our side of this investigation. You got it, Maya. We're all in this together. Come on, let's see what we can find. That's the spirit. Ooh, 
I will be right back. I need to get more water. But yeah, I will. Just it'll just be a minute. BRB. <laughs> scene again all right we're back i keep forgetting that it's the 3ds scene because i only do this like once a goddamn week but we're back according to the gray earl still sir Belduce butler the bell tower appeared mysteriously after lightning struck one evening for some reason sir Belduke became seriously agitated upon its appearance the bell tower in the town square is under continuous guard could this be related in some way to the death of the alchemist Great Witch Bezella will be tried in the court? That will be Labyrinthia's final chapter. A fitting end for a town ruled by witches and their magic. Am I to believe that this final chapter has already begun? That is correct. And there is no way you can possibly change its final outcome. Hmm. I wonder about that. You see, I gave my word to a young lady. I promised that without fail, I would be able to rescue her. If I'm not mistaken, the Great Witch Trial will begin in two weeks' time, the same day on which you will hold your next parade. I believe that should give us sufficient time to show you what we can do. Such a smug countenance. I find it intolerable. I beg your pardon? Two weeks from now, you say? I'm afraid that information is out of date, Herschel Layton. Out of date? What do you mean? My parade will be held the day after tomorrow, according to the amended story. But what? The day after tomorrow? That's not fair! Now that's the kind of countenance I want from the characters in my story. What? That's what I do, didn't you know? I decide the fate of characters who have no knowledge of their future. It would appear that you are not yet fully aware of the gravity of this situation. Let me see now. Just for fun, I'll write you a little story. A story full of surprises and a few tears. I shall enjoy seeing the emotions of the characters as they play their parts. A story for, for us? Stories are a fixture of this town. You would be wise to embrace them. Let's see, I think we need a stimulating incident. We shall have a witch, some witchcraft. And perhaps a little death. Death? You can't! Oh, but I can. Let me see. This is a golden opportunity to use the alchemist's residence. How about this? Your comrade meets with a death by golden curse in the alchemist's residence. Hmm. This could be a truly interesting story. No way! Feel free to act as you wish! 
from playing your role in the story. How can you? The beginning of a new tragedy or farce. The victim of a golden curse lies in the dwelling of a user of false alchemy. A man from afar falls through the golden curse, and a woman from afar cries out in grief. The woman is captured. Her dark trial begins. The fiery pit will cleanse all her sins. A man from afar falls to a golden curse, and a woman from afar cries out in grief? This must be referring to Maya and Mr. Wright. If we don't do something, Mr. Wright and Miss Faye will be in danger. There's no time to lose, Luke. Let's go and find them. That you are, Professor. <laughs> the story has already been written, and no matter what you do, you will not change the result. I do not agree. We do next can change the future in any number of ways. I'm sure that's what you want to believe. In fact, a naive outburst like that could be a poignant plot point. Please be my guest. Your words may help to raise the tension and bring a little excitement to my story. You monster! Luke, now's not the time. We need to help Mr. Wright and Maya. Okay, let's go, Professor. Better hurry. Yeesh! Hmm? Professor, do you hear a flapping sound coming this way? The sound of a large bird, perhaps. Ah! Hello. That's, a that's the owl we saw in the audience room. It's holding a letter in his mouth, not to mention watching us intently. Perhaps he wants to tell us something. I'll try talking to him to see what he wants. What can we do for you? I've got it, Professor. Who? That's the owl. Says the letter was delivered to the storyteller three months ago. To the storyteller? If that's so, we can't very well keep it. After all, it's wrong to read letters addressed to someone else. That's what the owl said. But he also said that there's absolutely nothing written on the sheets of parchment inside the envelope. Look, Professor. See? They're totally blank. A letter with nothing written on it. That is indeed most curious. And another thing, Professor. The owl says this letter was sent by the alchemist. What's that, my boy? Written by the alchemist? Do you remember what the storyteller wrote in the story he penned a moment ago? victim of a golden curse lies in the dwelling of a user of false alchemy. Which probably means the place at which this incident will occur. It's the home of the one who sent this letter. In other words, the alchemist's house. Right, Professor? It appears the address of the sender, Sir Belduc, is written on the envelope. Which means we had better make our way there immediately. Thanks, Mr. Hoop. Just on the envelope is somewhere near the town square. That's a little far from here, Professor. We might not make it in time. I think we'd better run. Luke, my boy, we have the need to rent a steed. I think you're right, Professor. That would be far quicker than running. Quickly, Luke. There's no time to lose. Hey, easy, boy. This house is certainly spirited. <laughs> Say, Nick, have you ever noticed how the color of that wall is different from all the other walls in the room? I think I've investigated enough crime scenes when I noticed something as obvious as that, Maya. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but actually, there was a small fire here a while ago. It was my fault. The wall ended up a little bit sizzed in the process. 
And as you mentioned it, there are some signs of a fire here on the floor, too. Yes, that's correct. Anyway, I decided to paint the wall myself. Looks like Mr. Grey Earl is way handier with his herbs than with a paintbrush. A little candle set fire to some dry straw. In all my time as a butler, I've never made such a major blunder. That's not that bad. You're being a little hard on yourself. That's right. It's not so bad. I think that's bad. You should see Nick try and do the laundry. Now that's a major blunder. Okay, that was one time. Anyways. Let's go check out Mr. Bell Duke's study. While we're here, could you show us around your room a little, Mr. Grey Earl? Of course. If it will bring you any closer to the truth. However, as the knights of the Inquisition have ordered that your crime scene be left undisturbed, I must ask that you refrain from touching anything while you are in the study. Sure, we'll be careful. Alright, let's look around. I got a little careless and failed to properly extinguish the fire. I painted the wall green so as to cover the discoloration caused by the fire. You know, a, a crop circle, right? That's an alchemist circle, Maya. Not in a wheat field. I'm sorry to repeat myself, but please be sure not to touch anything. You heard him, Maya. Let me keep your hands to yourself. No problem. I'll just do a touching with my eyes. With your eyes? Hey, that's a pretty little picture over there. We use a picture like this back at the office, don't you think? We can hang it right next to Charlie. Hmm? What is it, Nick? The wall behind this picture frame. The wall? Oh, that! Seems like there's some kind of green mark on the wall just by the painting. I wonder if there's something hidden behind this painting. Hey, Nick, look at this! The wall behind the painting is green! Is there a problem? Uh, no. No problem. Hmm, this could be some kind of clue. What's with the powder on the floor? Ugh, I need to get that coin too. It looks like a load of white powder has been scattered around the desk. Um, about this white powder. Has it been here since the incident? That's right. It was just like this when I entered the room on the morning following the incident. I have left it this way ever since. I guess someone must have dropped the container full of some medicine. Please try not to walk in it. You may leave footprints. Man, as you said it, all I want to do is leave little old footprints all over the place. It'll be like, Maya was here. Maya, please don't. Oh my god. What? Oh, that's a coin! And that's a coin. What's the matter, Mr. Grey Earl? Oh, it's, uh, actually, it's that pendant. I must say, I find it fascinating. Oh, you mean this whole thing? It's called a Magatama. Magatama? Yep! You could say it's kind of like. My source of power, I guess. I understand. Stones are often charged with energy, after all. The pendant you're wearing is pretty neat, too, but such a mysterious color. Oh, this? It's an amethyst. Master Bell Duke asked me to wear it. An amethyst? The amethyst brings about good vibrations, in an alchemy sense. Mr. Grey Earl? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just remembering Master Bell Duke. He gave me the stone and accepted me as his alchis the, the al the assistant alchemist. But now, master, such is the... Or, but now, master... Such is the order of the natural world. Seems like Grey Earl really misses him. 
must have really respected Sir Belduk. Well, I think we just about investigated everything we can for now. We didn't find any leads on the Great Witch. Oh, uh, Mr. Grey Earl? Yes, what is it? Is there anywhere else you can think of where we might find more clues? Let me see. Well, there's a cellar under this study. That's where the master kept his research materials. A cellar under this room? Yes, there's a trap door in the floor leading down to the cellar. A room containing Belduke's research materials. If you don't mind, I'd like to have a quick look at that room. I see. Very well. If you'll please just wait a moment. That ladder leads down into the cellar, but be careful, it's rather dark down there. Looks like it might be a little cramped down there, too. That's true. Perhaps it's a little bit small for the both of you at once. Okay, Nick, this seems like your kind of thing more anyway. What do you mean? I don't know, I guess you're just more suited to small, dark, damp places. I'm not a rat, you know. Oh shit. For real? Damn. Come on, you know that's not what I meant. I'll stay up here and snoop around for some clues. It's not snooping, Maya, it's investigating. Anyway, you do that, I'll be right back. Yay! Way to go, Nick! Well, I should return to my room. Please give me a call as soon as you have both finished. Okay, got it. chilly down here. Doesn't look like it's been used much. The air is so musty and stale. Anyway, better hurry up and take a look around. Hmm. Get a load of that dog. Looks like a sculpture of a goat, I think. Something about it gives me the creeps. Wait a sec, is this... This thing is made completely of gold! Could this be the result of alchemy? I guess in this town, anything's possible. If Maya were here, she'd break her back trying to take that goat away with her. That's strange. Almost everything in this room is covered in a layer of dust. Except that goat. It seems to have been kept in pristine condition. Looks like Sir Belduc studied alchemy here, too. Don't see anything medicine-like, but there sure is a lot of equipment. This desk is pretty messy. Not a speck of dust, though. I guess Grey Earl must be keeping it clean. A wooden box by a desk full with all kinds of junk. A doll is peeping out. I wonder if it was left by a little girl who was one of the doctor's patients. Ooh. Why is there a well inside? Is that a thing? Maybe. Well, well, well. If this isn't a well. Boo. I don't have my boo sound, so you get this. I've been using that too much today. <laughs> Looks like it's still in use, too. I'm guessing you need to... Uh, I'm guessing you need quite a bit of clean water for alchemy. Don't think that I hadn't noticed any plumbing here in Labyrinthia. Well... Looks like I've pretty much seen all there is to see down here. The room doesn't seem to have been used much, and there's nothing I can see that might prove a lead. If I stay here any longer, I might just end up covered in dust myself. Not to mention standing here sighing is clogging up my lungs. Maybe it's time I head back upstairs. I should probably see how Maya's doing. The alchemist's house. We have to hurry. The professor! Wait, wait for me! Miss Faye. Hi, Professor. What's up? You look flushed. Where's Mr. Wright? Have you seen him? 
Oh, Nick. He's just down in the basement doing some investigating. He should be back up soon. So how did it go? Did you get to see the stories, Heller? Please, get Mr. Wright immediately. It's safer if we're all together in one place. I'll explain later. Just hurry. Huh? As things stand, Mr. Wright is in serious danger. Nick's in danger? What do you mean? I have reason to believe that a witch will appear here soon. written in the story. <gasps> Do you happen to be the great witch Bazella? Concern yourselves not with who I am, but rather with what you will now become. <laughs> hey, it's nice. So true. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Whatever is the matter, child? You look positively flustered. Yo, is that Beta Shamspear on the left? Sir Belduke is no longer resident here. You'll need to go elsewhere for your medicaments. I know that! Let me through! It's a matter of life and death! How did Layden get through but you didn't? Life and death, you say? If so, then I may foresee a hit ballad. Raise up your heart and sing with Birdly. My bird is cracker for second and thirdly. Oh, this must be a rifle Mr. Barley was talking about. <laughs> yes, Ollie, I just said that, but yes. <laughs> anyway, I'm in a hurry. Oh, dearie, dearie me. <laughs> Dearie, dearie me. Professor! Damn. It, it wasn't me. Huh? What the? Hey, yo, what the fuck? Professor, the words the storyteller wrote really did come true. And in the worst possible way. A man from afar falls to a golden curse. At first, I thought he was referring to Mr. Wright. But I got it all wrong. It was about the professor. Oof. Well, on that note, I think that's a pretty good place to end for this week. Yo, there he is. Professor Layton was told, turned into a gold statue through witchcraft in the alchemist's residence. How can this be? Well, next time on Layton vs. Right, we will find out what the hell, who the hell, and how the hell. I think I said how the hell twice. How the hell, who the hell, and why the hell. But that'll be next Wednesday, hopefully. For now, I'm going to cut and, uh, yeah, uh, see y'all for the rest of the week. I guess we'll have some pretty interesting stuff coming up. Uh, but for now, I'll see you next time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for staying. Thank you for watching the show. Goodbye.